Hey, imagine you had a set of three microphones and you'd place them in a quiet place 50 meters away from each other, connect them to the same audio recorder and then play some notes on the synthesizer and record the result. Then theoretically you should create a physical delay effect. Luckily for today's video there was a sponsor who enabled me to do exactly this. And if you're interested, please join me in this video. Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Godox asked me if I wanted to do a review on the MoveLink 2 M2 microphone transmission system. And because that has long-term benefits for you, the viewer of my videos as well, I agreed to do this. I will use these microphone transmitters not in the way intended by the manufacturer, but for turning my synthesizers into remote synthesizers and checking the sound quality from various distances. This time in stereo. Here we go. The parcel arrived a few days later and I have to say the packaging looks really nice. Ah, true quality audio, what does that mean? We'll hear it later. Let's unbox this. Okay, here's a docking station for charging all three mix at once. A small black box containing accessories, a set of wind jammers, a manual, and inside the charger there are two wireless microphones and one receiver. Inside the accessories box we find two 3.5mm plug-in microphones, two audio adapter cables for connecting the receiver to a smartphone or camera and one USB Type-C cable for the charging station. There are also some magnets you can use to prevent the microphones from sliding around in your pockets should you wish to carry them inside your jacket. The microphones themselves are magnetic, so you can place them on any metal surface. The receiver and the two microphones are fairly small and come with clamps to attach them to your shirt or jacket. The size of the clamp also makes them mountable on the hot shoe of your camera. The microphones spot an internal microphone plus a 3.5mm audio input to use external microphones with or, as I'll show you later in this video, any other audio source. There's an on-off switch and a mute button on one side and the pairing button and a USB Type-C charging port on the other side. The the receiver has a headphone and a line-out jack, an on-off switch and volume buttons on one side and a pairing button and a USB Type-C charging port on the other. Let's turn these on now. All three devices have a small screen which shows you information about the current status. Also, these microphones were already paired so you don't have to do that. The screens on the microphone will show you the audio level, battery status and if they're currently muted or not. Pressing the pairing button shortly will turn on or off digital noise reduction. The receiver shows the level of both microphones, battery status and whether you're recording on stereo or mono. Pushing the power button shortly will let you select one of the microphones and using the volume buttons lets you change the level of the microphones individually. Pushing the pairing button shortly will toggle stereo or mono recording. The build quality of all of this is very good indeed. Everything is sturdy, the buttons have a well-defined clickiness to them and the charging station is rigid. I'm a bit suspicious about the lid of the charger which has no hinge. I don't know how many times I can open and close this before the plastic breaks. Alright, let's check the audio quality. I'll attach the receiver to my camera and use one of the microphones in the intended way. This is the audio quality using the internal microphone. This is the audio quality using one of the microphones provided. This is the audio using a third-party microphone. And this is using my Zoom H5 audio recorder using the transmitter. For comparison, here's what the Zoom H5 recorded directly. This is one of the transmitters standalone with noise reduction turned on. And this is one of the transmitters using the Zoom H5 and noise reduction. This is the third-party microphone plugged into my camera directly. Here's the accessory microphone plugged into my camera directly. And here's the Zoom H5 plugged into my camera directly. 
For this part of the video, I bought this adapter cable, which has one 3.5mm stereo and two 3.5mm mono audio connectors. I'll play back one of my tracks on the Akai MPC-1 here, this is a synthesizer music production workstation. One time, I'll have the audio cable plugged directly into the headphone out, where the audio is then picked up by another audio recorder, and the other time, I'll have the audio go into the Godox transmitters and receiver. I'll then level the resulting audio and switch back and forth in playback. You'll be able to see which version you're listening to at the moment. Here we go. I then ran the spectrum analyzer over both recordings, and here's the result. As you can see, the microphones have a slight emphasis on voice range frequencies, and there's a sharp drop around 20k. Next, I attached one of the transmitters to my electric guitar and the receiver to my paddleboard. This is how it sounds like. And last but not least, videos of this type must contain a range test. Godox claimed these microphones will cover a distance of up to 100 meters, so I have an idea. If I place one microphone at 100 meters distance and another one at 50 meters distance and my audio recorder at ground zero, then I should be able to create a real-world delay effect, because with the speed of sound covering 100 meters in roughly 0.3 seconds and the receivers returning the audio at the speed of light, you should hear the delay in such a recording quite clearly. So let's go outside to the garden, it's a hot summer's day and there's a lot of traffic on the road, so we'll have some nice ambience on our recording. In lack of a measuring tape, I used my cable reel, which is known to be 50 meters long. I rolled this out one and a half times because the garden next to my house wasn't long enough and conducting this experiment on the street is too dangerous and too noisy. So the distance covered here is roughly 75 meters. I then placed one of the microphones at the end of that line and one in the middle and a loudspeaker big and loud enough to be picked up by both distant microphones at the other end. Setup is like this, the stereo receiver goes into the stereo input of the audio recorder and on top of that I'll capture the audio from the internal microphones of the audio recorder as well. In theory, sound should arrive at the recorder first, then at microphone 1 and then at microphone 2. And in combination you should hear this as a delay effect. Ok, so let's turn on the remote microphones and indeed the signal at the receiver was strong and stable. Now I'll just connect my battery powered synthesizer to this big speaker, create a square wave saw wave patch and play some random notes. Um, I apologize, I didn't play something more meaningful because I didn't want to annoy my neighbors more than necessary. Yeah, and here's the result. So yes, this totally worked. 
Admitted, there's not a lot of real-life use cases for this setup, because the ambient noises are obvious, but hey, this was fun. And I hope watching this was fun for you too. Thanks to Godox for sponsoring this video. Yeah, and that's it for today. The Godox MoveLink 2 M2, the results were quite good. And if you found this interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.